Hello and welcome to, just a moment, let me get framed right, there you go. Welcome to day 16. Uh, I'll just do this while people are connecting. There you go. You can see us better now. Just move that a little bit to there. That's it. Right. <laughs> Hello, welcome to uh, day 16, and um, just say a few hi's to a few people. Uh, Samala, how are you doing from Ireland? Hi, Samala. Uh, Tracy. Tracy. And Marilyn, hello. Marcia, how are you doing? Uh, Elisa, she's got here tonight. Awesome. And Mike is back. How are you doing, Mike? So, uh, yeah. Well. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Oh, I saw, just saw it popped up there, yeah. Hi, Carolyn, how are you doing? Uh, do we need to move across here? Just shuffle across in some way. So a bit central. There you go. Central now. We're aligned. Okay. Oh, we're saying sorry for Karen. For yeah. Why are you saying sorry? What are you sorry for, Karen? I think the spelling, she put Medina instead of... Oh, Medina. okay. That's all right then. Hinks, how are you doing? Hi, Hinks. Uh Tia. Hi Claire. Uh, which is Claire. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter. Everyone. Thank goodness it's Easter. Uh, that winter's kind of just going away now, isn't it? That's it. We're moving into spring. Mm -hmm. My favourite time of the year. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's have a drink. Philomene. Hi Philomene. Hi Philomene. Thank you. So Samala said, looking forward to for today meditation. So ready to letting go of fear, feeling to save my body, releasing all sub subconscious patterns. Hmm? Um, it's fear, and it fear is a weird one, isn't it? Fear is a strange one, and you know, there's natural fear, there's unnatural fear, and there's you know fear that's just pointless. Um. But yeah, everyone suffers from p fear, and it's a big part of the the retreats we do is is to convert, transmute, let go of this fear, and um, so many of our actions and our behaviours are dominated by fear, and um, you know they say some people say that as many as eighty or ninety percent of our um, Decisions that we make in life are based on unconscious fears as well. Why we go down this road, why we do this, why we don't do this, why we don't achieve our goals. Um, you know, people have fear of success and they're not even aware of the fear and that stops them from being successful because they're sabotaging bit by bit all the way. So, um, yeah. And also fear creates um, insecurities. So a lot of people that are angry, uh, resentful, um, Jealous, you know, jealousy is like a fear of I'm not not being good enough. Um, I'm not as good as them. You know, they have more than me, so I must be less than. Um, so these are all fears. Um, good evening to Aggie. How are you doing? Happy Easter to do you as well. So, yeah, we, you know, fear is, is a big one. And um, we have fears that we develop naturally and due to our environment you know, due to our parents and our families and people around us that instill these fears subconsciously. I think we're only ever born with two fears and one of those is fear of um, falling and the other one is, if I remember it, fear of falling and loud noises. That's it. So yeah, uh, that's why babies cry when you drop them. Um, <laughs> no, but if you did. Anyway, it's actually not fear of falling, it's fear of hitting the ground, isn't it? That's what it is, really. Um, imposter syndrome, so hard to overcome. Yeah, um, it's all this self-talk, isn't it, what we do in our heads. So, um, you know, you know, belief systems all tie into this, don't they? Yeah, belief systems, definitely, for sure. So, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn, so glad you can join the live tonight. We're so glad you can join us, Carolyn. Yeah, so it's a good one last night. Thank you for everyone that made it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the dolphin said thank you very much for... And for those that are listening back as well. Yeah. 
just want to mention one thing. Oh, we'll do that at the end of it. Yeah. Anyway, fear. So, um, fear is horrible. And when you go through the dark night of the soul, you are completely riddled with it. Um, it's, un, it's, it's, it's the worst thing, you know. And if people had no fear, there'd be no wars in this, in this world, you know. There'd be, we'd all be able to move towards love in a, a lot more easier way. And like Tom Campbell, the teacher and consciousness um, explorer, explains from a scientific point of view what fear is. And it's the opposite of love. So, you know, love is the most efficient way information can travel. And it's, it's how things are well organized. And fear is disorganized information. Um, more so, chaotic. More chaotic, yeah. Um, so if you, um, if you imagine, say, for instance, a room, a, a library full of books, and every single book is perfectly alphabetized and organized, and it couldn't be any more organized. Whenever you need to get a specific a specific book on something, you know, you ask the librarian and she'll know exactly where to go to it. Now, if all those books are just tipped up upside down and thrown everywhere, that's what fear is. And the organized version is what love is. And so fear is, is just disorganization, you know. And when it's like that, then energy can't flow. So yeah, it feels like the energy of love flows and the energy of fear is very stagnant yeah so it is and it's like as, as tom explains if you've got two um um say two villagers uh, you know separate apart miles apart and one is based on love and one is based on fear everything that's built in the village of love would be you know a nice hut uh, maybe a nice malacca in the center and maybe some decorative arts and everybody would support that and say oh it's amazing and they would help in any way can i help this can i do this and then on the other side of it you've got a fear-based one and every time somebody creates something that is of value or you know gets some notice some significance they become jealous and they try and destroy it there's more competition there'll yeah. be more friction in the group you know everyone's going to be fighting to be the leader you know and also, it doesn't help for the people who have achieved the, the great things within that community because they're always frightened. It's like the person who lives in the penthouse has always got security guards because somebody's going to come in and steal what they've got. We are in a very fear-based society. Uh, there is more love than fear, otherwise we wouldn't survive. Um, you know, we wouldn't have got this far. Mm. Um, so there is a part of us that innately knows what is right and what is wrong. Um, I mean, one of the interesting questions that I always kind of ponder when I can't sleep <laughs> is that, you know, you have love and then you have fear. At what point does it become fear? At what point does fear become love? You know, there's a, there's a must be a, a point where it just shifts a over. Tipping point. Yeah, tipping yeah. point. So, and again, a lot of that is to do with its perception as well. Um, so fear is is within us we come into this reality with a certain amount of fear and the less fear you have the more love you have the more you enjoy life the more balanced you are and the more you can give to others um so i think ultimately if people were to say what spirituality is it's really transmuting fear into love and that's it you know if, if you just did that and it sounds easy enough but um you just have to look at history um, and just religions as well. You know, myself, I was brought up, you know, as a Muslim. And re when, I, when I look at religions now, a lot of people will make their choices. Oh, we can't do this. God's watching. I'm going to get punished. So a lot of, so a lot of people will d fall down the religious path. And rather than coming from a p place of love and compassion, they feel like they have to be good in order to go to heaven. And it doesn't, we, we, we are at the precipice where we're understanding that the information we received was only this much and there was way more information that we're having access to. And, you know, there is no judgment, you know, the biggest judgment that lies is within us, I think. I really do believe that. I think nothing, the higher realms up there, they, they don't judge in any shape or form. It's so deeply indoctrinated in a lot of religions all around the world. It's all fear-based. 
Yeah, and no matter, it's not like one religion can point to another religion and say, oh, they're worse than us, or, you know, you look back in any religious um, <laughs> history and there's groups of people within that that have done terrible, terrible things in the name of control or only because... In the name of God? In the name of God and used God as, as, a, as a way of, you know, moving... Controlling yeah, people. Yeah, and for their unconscious behaviour. And so it's been very hard. Um, it's been hard for, I know, of quite a few people and for, for me to connect back to what we call God because being brought up as a Catholic, that was, you know, it was lots of nuns telling me what I can do and what I can't do. And, you know, we had to go to confession and, you know, if you spit or you swore, you'd feel guilty I mean, that's a horrible thing for a child to, to, to experience. Um, so, you know, it's not down to any specific religion. We're not kind of religious yeah. being here. Mm -hmm. It's just the, it, and it's the same in spirituality and communities as well. Pattern. It's just, yeah. we're just referring to the patterns yeah. that have taken place throughout humanity. So whatever religion, whatever belief system you're in, you know, there is a, a thread of truth there that it's the, the original message is to connect to God, to mm -hmm. connect to your, and you are God. You are <laughs> expression of the energy itself. We are a piece of that God expressing itself and knowing ourselves. And when we really realize that, that we're not giving it all this, we're, we're actually loving ourselves and everyone around us because we're all that. Um, something that Marilyn said there is that yeah, there's also um, fears that are passed down through our genetic code, yeah. And that's true, isn't it? Because, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, our eye colour, our hair colour, uh, certain mannerisms, um, even the way people, perhaps there's somebody who was a singer in the family and that's gone another generation, two generations, suddenly they have the same kind of voice and all these different attributes are passed through our genetic code. Mm. And um, it makes sense that talents, gifts and fears, sometimes completely irrational, um, so there's something on past lives there. Um, we might talk about that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So did a couple of, I've done a few regressions on people with hypnosis to past lives. And, um, I remember doing a one with a woman who could not bear having water on her face. So, um, and there was no logical explanation to it. So we did this regression and um, it ended up going back. I always remember it's one of the first regressions I ever did. And it was uh, um, 1645, I think it was, so 1600s. She was a cabin boy called Peter. She was on a, on a boat, a, one of these big old, old boats. The captain was a, a German called Karl Munster. I always remember this, Karl Munster. And... Um, she was a cabin boy and they were in a rough seas and the last thing she remembered was this massive wave in the storm hitting her in the face and she died. And that trauma was passed through into this life. And when under hypnosis, we explained the fact that this is kind of the past life and that she doesn't have to and she understood what it was. The next day she had a shower in her face and she was fine. So was this the information she gave through the regression? Yeah. Or was it the information you received? No, it's the, she, was she was speaking. She's saying, I'm there, I'm on a ship. And oh, okay. I can... I can um, explain the whole... Yeah, explain it all. So, so the question is there, was that actually her soul that had come through? Or was that her experiencing genetic imprint and tuning into the memory of that? Um, there's lots of evidence for the past... Yeah, just so there's genetic imprint, which is that comes through the, the, the family line. But then the soul imprint, do you think, is slightly different on a soul level? Where if something that can, you know, affect someone's psyche or, or it's so traumatic that it can... I'm just... This is a theory that it can imprint the soul that... Um, because I've had a past life regression and the, the past life regressions it showed me, I think... There was a few ones, obviously, where I was a woman and, you know, great things I didn't experience. And in the regression, you know, I'm now this jolly man in India, a healer on top of a, a mountain. And I'm speaking as if I was him. And I was like, oh, no, I chose, I specifically chose to be an ugly man. Because being a woman, you know, it affected me on a soul level. 
there was a belief system that was then created. So I'm just wondering, was that on a soul level then? It's it's hard. I'm not going to do that because I've had so many numerous lifetime of experiences of being a woman and the geisha and being taken away from the pretty the ones it took me to. So it was interesting how when I came through as the man from India, this big jolly man with a big belly, full of laughter and whatnot. He was so clear. Well, when I was in it, it was like, oh no, I I chose this. I wanted to be a man. I wanted to make sure I was unattractive because. There was a belief system somewhere on a soul level that mm-hmm. oh, if I'm a- attractive, I'm going to be raped or this is going to happen or, you know, there, there's a lot more abuse involved. Whereas if I'm unattractive and a man, there's less chance of that happening. Yeah. I don't and, know, just and it's I th- something I experienced. And I think so. that is the case for a lot of people. They come into this reality. They choose the incarnations because they want to know um, what it's like. They want to understand the lessons. So they may say, OK, well, you know, I need to be more patient in the next. So when you die, you go for a life review, which you review yourself. And then you say, well, actually, yeah, I could I could really do with being more patient. So then you say, OK, well, I'll go back in into the earth reality and I want to have a life that's going to give me an opportunity to work on that patience. So then they might suddenly make you a, a single mother with five kids and you've got no money and, you know, you've got lots of problems and you're having to develop and work on that muscle of being patient um so we in essence um i believe based on people i've met and experiences that we choose the the life that uh, that we have in order to it's like going to college and saying well i want to study this this and this you know and some of it might be really hard and some of it might be easy we might uh, meet up with um people that we've studied with before and we might meet up with um, our arch enemies who facilitate these feelings again but when you go back to the other reality your best of friends it's like being in a movie um it's like a soul contract it's yeah. like you know on a soul level they love you so much they want the highest expansion for you so they know that your deepest growth is going to come from challenging you you know yeah. on a human level it's really hard to we're in the in the body aren't we we're in the human vessel And we have emotions and we have feelings and it's very challenging to see it from a soul soul perspective. But just from that experience, again, it was from my experience of my past life regression, something switched. I knew, I just felt it that even though my human mind's like, why would I want to choose torture? Like who would want to come in and experience torture? But on a soul level, it was, I understood that, yeah, I, I chose these. I wanted to experience these. And some people choose to have very prominent endings to their life um, as, you know, perhaps they're taken hostage or something happens like this that, you know, the shockwave goes around the world so to waken people up as well. And um, I've had quite a few different past lives which I've tuned in t- into the last f- few years since doing this. And, and that's another aspect of when you're doing this awakening, you are, as you expand you are expanding your awareness and energy and maybe bumping up against fears that are connected to past lives. And in which case, that's another aspect which gets he- it's healed. Mm. There'll be opportunities for that to be healed through your own awareness of what that is. It's not like somebody will come along and just take it away from you because it's also they're also orchestrated you. by the higher self as well. Mm-hmm. When you're ready, you know, when you're expanding and you get to a certain level, it's like, okay, let's go deeper. Okay, let's go into them past lives and them imprints that are still energetically on a soul level. But I do believe the high, it's all the higher, it's really you, the the multidimensional or higher self, or there's so many different terminologies, orchestrates it divinely. No matter how we see it, it's always done divinely. Yeah. Your higher self knows when you're ready to face it, if it's not gonna shock your nervous system, or affect your day to day because we can get caught in that, you know, and the higher self knows that you're ready to deal with it and it's not going to affect this lifetime that much. I do believe that. And, a few comments coming in. and also if you feel pulled to a certain thing, you know, like you, for instance, y- you see these prodigies that are four and five years old suddenly playing, the, the hands can kind of reach the keys and they're managing to play. Yeah, this is stuff that comes through. Uh, also, there's, um, I think it's Jenny, Jenny Cockle, 
and um, she is from Ireland, so Samala might have heard of her. <laughs> and she um, she had a famous. She's written a book called Jenny Cockle. She's written a book uh, about when she was a past life, and when she was in her thirties, she started to have these dreams, these very vi- vi- vivid dreams of uh, having a family in a past life with, like, I think, four children, and she used to see them float on this on this boat and see them off in the morning on these docks and she'd meet them at night time with, with sandwiches and things. And it was completely different life. And it, it was a hundred years before or 80 years before. And she ended up tracking down her, um, children. And there was only one surviving children child. And she says, I am your mother. And he was nine in his nineties. And I think his name was Paddy. He was in, his, he was in his nineties and she's in her thirties. And she told him lots of stuff. She said, do you remember when we did this? Do you remember when we did that? So if you're really interested in past lives, that's a fascinating one to read. And also there's a, on YouTube, um, there's an, a young Indian boy oh, yeah. who went, he was, he was brought up in, as a, uh, in one village and he says, this is not my home. I belong here. And there's a whole story about that. So if you just look up um, young Indian past life regression, uh, it'll come up. So there's, there's so many, much evidence um, the other th- question is, why don't you remember your past lives? Because if you're coming into this life and you're wanting to work on specific things, then if you're thinking about your, your lost family, your lost love, and you're feeling all that consciously, it's going to affect your decisions. Mm-hmm. It's going to affect everything you do. So we're kind of blanked as we come in. Sometimes strong emotions, they get carried through. Strong passions, strong loves get pa- uh, carried through. Um, you know, it's, and you'll have these since you were a child, certain maybe countries you want to visit or certain uh, pieces of music that stir something within you. It just seems familiar to you as well. It's familiar, yeah. And there's almost like a sadness, uh, like, you know, a loss, a feeling of yearning to connect back to that and you know we could remember every if you've had you've had thousands and thousands and thousands of past lives you imagine all the trauma <laughs> and lost loves you wouldn't be able to function you couldn't you? function you'd be like your computer's just gone you know um it's almost like having every program you've ever installed on a computer still on it you just wouldn't too much distraction so we are we are kind of wiped but as you expand, it may be necessary, as we said, to uh, uncover that and start to look at it from a different perspective. Yeah, I feel like as the consciousness shifts on the planet and we're understanding how the whole system works on a soul level, it's like spiritual maturity is the best way I'm, I'm seeing it and trying to describe it, is that now we are having access to past lives because it's useful to propellers in this lifetime but what's going to happen more and more is what's happening initially is people are remembering remembering past lives where they were tortured or they were burned and quite horrendous but what's happening now is as you start shifting it's your frequency higher you're going to start accessing the amazing past lives the ones where you use your gifts your any attributes that you had they're still there, ready to be activated. So as you start shifting your frequency, you'll start gaining access to amazing lifetimes. But I think a lot of people are really caught up on the cycle of, um, you know, the burned witch and all the negative past, past lives. And I do feel sometimes it can become a bit of a spiritual trap if you get caught in that. I, I this just from my experience. Mm. And as I've started shifting my energy, um, I've exp- I've gone back to past lives pretty yeah been pretty amazing to see the positive attributes on a soul level that I have that I can now gain access to and bring forth in this lifetime to help myself and help other people. Yeah and it's usually the people that have gone through some of the most traumatic ones end up doing healing work at, you know coming out this end I mean I've seen I've seen two past lives where I was crucified and I only saw them briefly, but I felt it. Um, one, I was boiled to death, um, which there's a whole story behind that one, but um, tortured in a couple of lives. And one, I was, um, I, 
even now when I think about it, I could feel it. Um, um, I would not, um, it was to do with religion and it was like I wouldn't give up my faith. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a whole story about that. It'll go in the book. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's... Um, Trying to go up to scroll up. To yeah, yeah. You, you deal with them when when you're when you're ready to deal with them and when they're useful otherwise they just become more trauma and, and stuff so but it's not always bad you know we've we've got good things and you are a a consequence of your choices so if you're doing you know making good choices now you've you've obviously you know you've learned from your past mistakes and um yeah so one thing uh, Samara said there what saddens me most is that I'm doing the work and see these patterns in my children. My daughters get panicked, attacks due to fear, breaks my heart. <clears throat> it's their journey. And I know when you love someone, you want to protect them, but it is their journey. And um, to heal something, they need to be aware of it first. So, you know, it may be that through the work that you're doing, you can bring more awareness to that and, and perhaps share your tools so they can look at this panic attack as what it exactly is. It's an irrational fear or it's triggered from something else. Sometimes when we work with people, we work it on this fear here, which could actually be a physical uh, problem, could be a, you know something that's manifested as, as a physical ailment. And then you go back, oh, well, it happened when you were eight years old. And then actually it happened. Yeah in uh, ancient Egypt or something yeah. but it's cyclical <laughs> take a drink I'm just going to say a few hellos hello Ash um, Laura Jennifer and what else have you got here oh great insights and chats a lot of people get really obsessed with, with past life regression um, and it's interesting and it's fascinating, but you know, it's this life is more important, uh, really is. Um, do you have any suggestions as how to heal from past life regression? How to heal through past life regression? Um, from, past life. from past life. Does that mean that you had a past life regression that you're trying to heal from or you're healing with past life regression? Um, yeah, if you'd just like to clarify that, Marilyn, any suggestion on how to heal? Does that mean using past life regression or, yeah, just clarify that and we can. So, um, yeah, it's um, it's interesting stuff, isn't it? Mm. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if it helps, Marilyn, but for me, I was doing a lot of, this is this chunk of my awakening about 10 years ago. Um, just felt pulled to keep doing this meditation every morning without fail for 45 minutes connecting with my higher self and I think within three months of it I was walking down the road and I just kept hearing this one sentence it was like a riddle in order to move forward you need to go back and I could just feel it I thought I need to have a past life regression because wherever I was in my life whatever was still in my energy field was stopping me from moving forward. So I would suggest is to connect with your higher self and use your intention and be, and ask your higher self to show you and guide you to the right regressor as well. That's what I did. I didn't go out looking and Google search. I just tuned in and I just trusted my higher self. And within two days that I was at an event and this woman was, a, she did past life regression. And it was, it was just such synchronicity. I just knew that it was all divinely timed and I trusted it. So I don't know if that helps. Connect with the higher self, tune in, say, what do I need to let go in order to expand for the, for the highest well-being of myself and for the planet? Just yeah, and, and ultimately, you know, you can do it yourself um, or it comes to you as you expand mm. um as always be mindful who you choose because there's people out there that um like in all industries that are ex excellent and very very skilled in what they do and there's other people that aren't and um you know they could open up a, a box of frogs that <laughs> sorry i think i mentioned frogs there i think somebody's scared of frogs but but uh, who is katie uh, okay, see, is she there <laughs> Not sure. um yeah you can open up a, a whole can of worms and um and not have the not, not have the resources to deal with them um mm. so yeah 
as always, just be mindful and um, yes, yeah, but do a little bit of research online. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Some nice videos about it. Some interesting stuff. But you know, past life regression, near death experiences, out of body experiences, they all kind of um, go into one. I mean, you know, I used to do a meditation with people. You know, um, they'd listen to it and <clears throat> they'd be on a train track and then they'd get off at a station, they'd go through a couple of doors and then they'd see a past life and a lot of people go, oh my God, I felt I saw this and I saw that. But I don't know how useful that would be. Um, only as much as curiosity. You know, um, I'm I'm more interested now in actually doing stuff that really is useful for people. So um, if it was part of a session, that would be different, I think. But... Um, yeah, it's, it is fascinating, and there's enough evidence out there to, to show that that we do have past lives. So the, going back to the original question is that we can still, there's a still an argument there or discussion whether or not it is your past life yeah. or it's genetic yes. memory. Okay, so that's the thing. There's two different schools of thought there. Um, but either way, we are all the same energy anyway, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's so many clear patches out there. It's, it's unbelievable. like the water, isn't it? The water's <laughs> the same water that's been here since forever, so yeah. we're the same. <laughs> Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Um, I was told. Okay. Um, do you have any suggestions? Okay. Oh, you were told. Ah, I see. So you had a past life regression and somebody told you something. Mm got to heal from it okay so i think we said this in lesson one or two um day one day two just because somebody tells you something really even though they may have amazing gifts you they'll do things that are incredible that you can't do it doesn't mean they're right it's just a data point and even when you experience something yourself, like if you if you sat there and an angel suddenly appeared in front of you and went i am an angel yeah Maybe they don't speak like that, but I am an angel, yeah. <laughs> and they give you a flower, and uh, like that's just a point. That's data. It's information coming into your consciousness, and just keep it as that. So many times people go to psychics. So many times people go to healers and people with a little bit more awareness than them, and they get told something and they take it as you know truth. This is what it is, and it's not um, always the truth. <laughs> So it's not always the truth. So just go, okay, well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And if I experience a couple more things like that, then I'll start to maybe yeah. entertain that idea. I'll be open-minded and skeptic about it. And just tune in as well, Marilyn. I think hopefully with these 30 days, everyone should hopefully start feeling a lot more clearer, lighter and brighter and be able to tune into their discernment and to just have that knowing to know just I just feel like there's a divine intelligence inside you that has the answers and just hopefully with these meditations mm-hmm. you can get the clarity that you need to know whether you need to do this or not. And this is the work I'd, I'd, I'm really passionate about is empowering people. You know, people like, oh, shall I come and book a session? It's like, no, actually tune in, you know. That's very empowering, I think, to people. It gives their power back to them and be make them, you know, give, let them know that actually... The divine is is in them and they have the wisdom to know what's right and wrong and whether they should do something or not. And I think with spirituality, there's so many vulnerable people out there. And just like with any profession, people are going to take advantage of it. And there is other, yeah. there's, there's other people with genuinely pure hearts that will want to help with no agenda. It's funny as you're speaking there, I got this quick image. Um, it's a bit like... If you've got no internet and you go to the internet cafe and you're paying every day to go to the internet cafe and kind of what we do is just come around and install broadband and go, there you go. <laughs> you've got internet That's now. That's great, great analogy. See ya. And you don't have to go to the internet cafe anymore. There you go. You're done. And you can download all you want then. Well, you can't download all you want. They decide what you download really. Um, oh yeah. The other thing was, for instance, if you were to be told that you were the Queen, Queen of England, you know, Queen Mary of Scots or whatever her name is. I didn't like history. Mary Queen of Scots, that was it. Or you were Vlad the Impaler or Attila the Hun. What difference would it make? That's 
it would make a difference if it was useful in some way. Mm. So, you know, if you kept going around and putting people on spikes, then you go, ah, that's why I do that. <laughs> and, then it makes spa- and then you could understand it, you know? So, um, I just, <laughs> or having flashbacks every time you have a cocktail sausage. <laughs> mm. So, um, and it's in, intention, you know, if, if there's a part of you that feels that it needs to just go back to just clear something in order to move forward, using your intent and just connect with spirit and be like, show me. Seriously, when you connect with intention and you ask the universe to guide you and show you, it will. It definitely will. But it's yeah. got to come from that, not from the intellectual and not from a safer lev- level. It's got to come from the core. Yeah. It's, um, there's not much that annoys me, but what does annoy me is, <laughs> is people taking advantage of other people, either bullying them or taking advantage or being insincere with them. And that is, you know, that something I've got to work on. But you just see people that are in such need, uh, especially some of these healing retreats. They, you know, people as a last ditch attempt, they'll go. And for some people it works, it's great. But for other people, they're manipulated into coming to these. Yeah, yeah, you pay us a few thousand pounds or we'll help you and do all that. So, you know, I think it's really important for people to be really present and to be, you know, understand that they are powerful and understand that they they can seek out the right people that are going to help them. And if something doesn't feel right, don't do it. If it yeah. doesn't feel right, if it feels off, especially when you start switching on to these energies, you start having more awareness and go, something not right about this workshop. Or It can be really colourful, it can look all amazing and all the marketing's done, all the right words are being said to you. All you need to do is just tune in into that internal dialogue. And you'll get your yeah. answer whether, and if it's if it's just even a little bit off, it's a, it's a no for me really. I was listening to someone talking recently. She was in America, and she went to a, a um, an event, and she said, you know, she was fine until she actually sat down in the energy, and then she and she's paid like quite a lot of money for this, and she just went, I don't, I, I've got to go. And she had to leave. She had to leave. She listened to it, and later on, she found information that was right, that she, she had to go. There's a reason for that. You know, the energy was distorted. So sometimes don't blame yourself. You might even get to the point where you've spent money, you've walked through the door, you sat there, and you might be a, a two days in or something and go, something feels really off. Just go, just leave. And, and you know, trust your own judgment. And, uh, yeah. <sighs> that was a rabbit hole. I know, yeah. I just realised, <laughs> looked at the time, I was like, oh. It's uh, and there. good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for joining me. <laughs> so fear, yeah. Anyway, fear is is the um, perceived enemy, and um, the opposite is love. So um, if you're doing something that's, you know, making you feel angry, or resentful, or jealous, there's a fear underneath it. Underneath that, what is, what is the fear? So F E A R, face everything and rise. Or forget everything and run. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one as well for fear. Yeah. Uh, false evidence appearing real. Mm. But that doesn't help when you're <laughs> in fear, you know? Um, oh, I was going to say. I was going to say something then. I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah. So, for instance, just as a, before we get into it, um, like if somebody's like really angry with someone, you know, say they they work on a door and they, they go to the gym every day and they, they want to train, they want to be big, they want to be powerful. You think, well, they're not fearful because everybody's scared of them, but they are fearful because there's a part of them going, I'm not enough. What if I'm not strong enough? What if I'm not big enough? You know, and the other one is that, you know, I, I need to look a certain way. I need to dress a certain way. I need to have a certain car or certain clothes or, you know, get some cosmetic surgery so I look attractive because if I'm not attractive then people won't love me and if they don't love me that's the biggest fear you know the fear of not being loved yet when you take it down the the line they've you know they've spent so much money on on designer handbags and clothes and everything else but the underlying fear that's motivating that behavior is the fact that they're scared of not being enough Uh, and you know, that's kind of how all the fear. So whatever your behavior is that you're or 
fear that you think you're you have just trace it back a bit go back a few steps and you'll, you'll find that and people are behaving in a certain way because you know they want to control things because they fear that if they lose control what what's going to happen so there's always a fear, the fear at the bottom of the of it. unknown in it <coughs> yeah it's the fear of the unknown so it's better to feel something rather than the unknown yeah and it's uh, when you collapse these fears it's like a, a pack of cards you start taking a couple of if you take a couple off the top nothing's going to happen you take a couple off the bottom it's like core, jenga it's it just like goes core fears, yeah. yeah so the, all the other fears start collapsing they're going oh god i didn't realize because that all the other ones are based off this original core yeah fear. yeah so yeah f fear is the absence of love I, w I would agree with that would you yeah I would agree with that as well. So, yeah. Yeah, great song. Stop Ian it. Brown, Fear. Yeah. Oh, I met Ian Brown. Did you? Yeah, at a concert. He was just right behind me the whole time. He's and then song, I managed that. to get a picture with him going. Was that a hip-hop gig? That's what it was. We were at this hip-hop gig, this conscious hip-hop gig. No one at the gig in Manchester knew who he was. There was loads of Afro-Caribbeans and Jamaicans and very multicultural. And I'm like, oh, is Ian Brown? You know, having this massive moment, everyone's just like. <laughs> I'm sure he loved it. They'll be recognised. Yeah. yeah. It was so just so down, so down to earth, so down to earth. But yeah. Right then. Grab your headphones. Mm -hmm. Get yourself in a nice, comfortable place. And uh, we'll start as soon as everybody's ready. <clears throat> Give yourself a few moments just to get yourself comfortable. Headphones aligned. No, you don't need to go to the toilet. It's all right. The doors are closed. Phones off. The phones are off. The dog's got a bone. The cat's outside. Everybody's happy. Okay. And uh, yeah, let us begin. This meditation has been produced with a prominent frequency of 396 Hertz and where the natural note of A is retuned to 432 Hertz, which is said to be the natural frequency of nature and the universe. It is my belief that feelings such as guilt, sadness, anxiety and fear, as well as positive feelings such as joy, love and happiness exist in their own particular frequency band of vibration. 396 Hertz is one of the fundamental frequencies used in sound healing to help transmute and release anxiety and fear. Whilst listening to this production, focus your attention on the main dominating tone. This is present throughout and try to imagine pulling that sound into the centre of your heart. So now, make yourself comfortable and begin by focusing on your breathing. Deep, long breaths in and out until you feel like your body is becoming heavy and relaxed. As you hear the sound of my voice and you breathe in and out, be aware of your thoughts. And as you begin to relax your neck and your shoulders, and gently relax the muscles in your face, in your jaw. Your thoughts begin to slow down and your breathing becomes slower. As you hear the sound of my voice, Sensations begin to guide you into a sacred time of connection 
with yourself. This is your time to just be in this space, in this moment. When we think about fear, we realize that it exists in most people in different degrees. Some of this fear is a result of our culture, our environment, learning experiences from our childhood, and even carried through generations embedded in our DNA. This free-floating fear is wanting to express itself in whatever form it can through anger, frustration, depression and many other feelings that you would not immediately associate with fear itself. So as you relax deeper into a state of potentiality where you can safely be aware of the presence of fear from a different perspective. Fear is not real because you are energy that is eternal. The feelings are transient temporary, a passing collection of thoughts, feelings and emotions that exist to teach you to bring to your awareness an opportunity to become more aware of yourself. shine the light into the darkness. Opposites exist in all levels of nature. Fear of not being loved is really trying to teach yourself to love yourself and to understand that you are good enough and unique exactly as you are. In each of us, there is a part called ego. The ego is defined as awareness in the service of fear. And without fear, the ego cannot exist.
as you relax deeper. Breathe into this positive space, the energy that surrounds you now enables you to feel safe, to just let go, to sink into the experience. All fear is an illusion. Love is the most powerful energy that exists. Open your heart and ask for the frequency of love to flow into your heart space. You are right where you are supposed to be, at this point, at this place, to realize and have the opportunity to be aware and to choose a different way to react, to surrender to the understanding that whatever happens, you have the resources within you to accept and overcome any obstacle and to enjoy the process of recognizing fear for what it is. processes are now taking place on many levels that will start to release any energy of fear safely and calmly from your body, from your mind, in your subtle energy bodies, from past timelines and even future timelines, as intent and love are what created life itself.
there are 30 trillion cells in your body, all of which are connected and are working together in perfect harmony, vibrating at a quantum level and filled with information. As this sound frequency travels in through your ears, into your head, your neck, your shoulders, it vibrates through your body at a cellular level. Every cell resonates with this healing frequency. All you have to do is give permission for yourself to heal at this level. with a deep communication to all parts of yourself that you can change anything through your intention. You can heal anything when you let go and connect to this level of energy. You deserve to live without fear and to find new ways to express love to yourself and to those around you at every opportunity. In a few moments time, I will count from five down to one. And as I count from five down to one, on the count of one, give yourself permission for any of your fears to be gently released and to do so in whatever way is most beneficial for your present state of growth and awareness. Breathe slow and deep. Five, four, three, two, and one. Go deeper into your heart, release, and let go.
forgive myself for feelings of guilt, anger, sadness, and understand that these were lessons to guide me to this place, to this moment, for this process. Now, what would it feel like for every cell in your body to start to glow with white, bright light? Like millions of tiny lights all merging into one bright white light that surrounds your body and extends out into the room where you are. out into the street, becoming so bright it extends out into your town and your city. How bright would that have to be? Realigning, rebalancing. Expand. This is who you really are. The illusion of self is just that, an illusion. There is nothing to fear. The very essence of your being is pure vibration of the highest, purest frequency of love. Go inside now and express to yourself how grateful you are for being you. What an amazing opportunity you have to experience this life through your body, through your thoughts and feelings, your senses to hear, to see, to touch and taste and to express yourself to others and to all the people in your life that you care about.
everything has a grand design and a divine timing. And you are right where you are supposed to be. So now, where are you going to be in six weeks? In six months? Or even six years? As you continually raise your vibration, you continually transmute the fear, leaving more space for gratitude and self-appreciation as you welcome in the potentiality of possibility, vibrating at a new level of consciousness. Life is happening for you, not to you. As your cells shine brightly with this pure white light, you may begin to feel tingles, vibrations, even sometimes tears gently moving down your face. This is your body just letting go. Your heart is sending out pure frequency as you start to align with your true self the energy starts to flow from the top of your head down to the tips of your toes without fear, without resistance, just be.
everything that exists is information. And as we welcome new codes of this information, responding to your intention, the light finds its way into every part of you and at every level. It is at this time we ask your guides and all the higher frequency beings that come into this space to help you in whatever way necessary for the benefit of your own growth and awareness in this moment, in this now. And over the days and the weeks and the months that follow and every subsequent time you enter into this space as the fear gently moves away out of your energy system out of your body it leaves a space that can be filled 
with positive feelings such as love, excitement, creativity, joy, and the ability to choose how to feel and how to react based on all those positive feelings and sensations. As you open your heart even more now and just float in this awareness. And each time you revisit this space, this process becomes easier and easier. Sometimes just the thought of how you're feeling right now 
is enough to bring you back into this pleasant state of healing and awareness. And now, in a few moments time, I will count from five down to one. And as I do, we ask that all parts of you that retain the highest vibration come back into this space, into this here and now. Bringing into your awareness any and all information and feelings that are most beneficial for your current states of development and growth. Five. Four. Three. Coming back into your full awareness. Two aware of your physical body and one feeling brighter lighter and calm And in your own time. Gradually feel yourself back in the body. And as soon as you are, just give us a little notification in the chat. Yeah, shout a hello to Heidi who is a little bit late, it's okay. <laughs> Not sure it's because the hours went back. Yeah, before, probably. So, so. Yeah. <coughs> hmm. I think they've gone deep tonight. <laughs> yeah, it was quite clearing, lots of clearing. Yeah, lots of clearing. We've just done a moji in the shop. <laughs> yeah, we can't type, just put an emoji in. Describe how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> if there is one now. Uh, 
And Marley's at first back. You know, Heidi, um, we've actually gone forward by one hour. Is the England the only place that does that on the whole planet by any chance? No. Do other countries do it? Yeah. I think. <laughs> Google. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, we put our clocks forward one hour, so. On the 31st of March, every year it goes forward one hour, and in October it goes back an hour. You can always go back, Heidi. It's in it's in time anyway. Um, Philomene said, felt the om sound as I as a huge reflection, reflection in the heart. Yeah. Awesome. And I am back. Thank you. Hinks is back. Yeah, Heidi, just rewind and do it that way. Yeah, it's you okay. can just rewind it back. When they listen to it live, they can pull the thing back, can't they? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, you can just go backwards. We'll wait for you. Oh my God, I didn't know. There you go. <laughs> why, why do they do that? Is it to do with farming or something? Why, do, why is that? Um, yeah, I think it is to do with we're lining the, the, for the farming, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. You're not quite on camera there. You're just hanging oh, off it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Aggie, lots of clearing. Yeah, yeah, it was. It felt yeah. there was a, yeah, a lot of clearing. I had loads of tears. I didn't feel anything. I just felt loads of tears. So it felt like for the group, there was emotions maybe being cleared. But yeah, definitely lots of yawning and burping. We ended up putting it and <laughs> put it on the mute whilst the music was playing because we were burping. Also, um, Aggie, you might be, you, because you, you do the work now, it's like you might be clearing for others as well. Yeah. So um, it might not be just your stuff. I'm sure you're aware of that as well. So uh, yeah, um, Marcia said, back thank you very deep disappeared in the middle again but aware my index fingers were flicking against each other mm. at one point and the energy between them awesome Karen said that was amazing thinking now I woke at 4am with muscle cramps in my lower abdomen thought it was my sit ups but I'm used to doing a few maybe energy clearing was strange feeling yeah the um that's how I started um the um um, the abdomen is like the dante area and it cramps like this okay and um if you listen to when i would listen to a sound that was like 416 um hertz like certain sound bowls or within that range my stomach would cramp up so that's probably a good sign and also you'll get used to that cramping because if you start bringing energy and working with people that happens as well it's clenches up yeah it happens randomly you'll be sat watching something and it just <laughs> oh Heidi saying it's 5 30 there oh well it's actually 9 30 here 9 30 here so have gone forward. Oh, there you go well, there's I didn't think about maybe reminding people that were in the group that the clocks are oh you can you can go back to bed now and then listen to it later um feeling very peaceful and content thank you so much Tracy's I just back amazing surround sound Awesome. Um, Kara said, I just experienced the pushing on the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got it as well. That, yeah. Right there. It's like right in the center. Cause people say, oh, my heart's there. It's like, it's like, it's, there. it's like, mm. it's like a tension, isn't it? The energetic center, yeah. Yeah. And Jennifer, oh, wow. Feeling very peaceful and content. Thank you so much. And you, Jennifer, are very welcome. I'm feeling quite content and peaceful after that too. Oh. Yeah, I can feel it in my heart. Um, it's a very specific um, 396, that meditation, and it's very contained. Like, you notice, like, last night was, like, out there oh, with the dolphins and uh, everything well. else that's going off. This is, like, like a laser. It's like, it's like that. It's very specific energetically on the root chakra. But it's not just the root chakra. It's the energy. And if the frequency of fear, yeah. yeah that's better. I just realized the light's not on. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um... Like Knuckles, yeah. Like Knuckles, giving yeah. it that. Maybe it is. Maybe it's a spirit guy giving it some of that. A uh, little thing where they do yeah, with people. I, think it, I, I might be wrong. I think it's ex there's expansion or clearing happening in the heart when that happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it is. It's expansion. It's, it's expansion. expansion yeah. It's the energy going through it. I can feel it now. <sighs> I've had it uh, very strong for the last four days now. Ah, 
more it's all on my left mainly on the left side <laughs> yeah yeah i feel that <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, day seventeen tomorrow. Day seventeen. Um. Yeah. What What amuses me about when I watch how many people are watching, then like five or six drop off, and then five or six go back on again, and five or six drop off, and I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> oh yeah, I can feel that. I get used to it though. Ah, it proves that something's happening. So yeah, day seventeen. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And is it April Fool's tomorrow? No, April Fool's is... Oh, here it is. <gasps> I'm a week behind. Ignore me, guys. Hades an hour behind. You're a week behind. <laughs> oh, my God. Are we in April next? Yeah. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. April already, eh? And if you're watching this in the future, I don't know what month it is, what year it is. Um, but, yeah. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Well, um, if anybody else got any questions or anything they want to throw in there before we go, let me know. Um, thank you again. Oh, yeah, that's what I meant to mention. Yeah, there's a few people have um, have donated. We thank you very much for that. And, and they do it via... Oh, let's have a look. I always do that. Come to the wrong screen. This one. Oh, that's a whale. That's a dolphin. Oh, that's Yesterday's right, they do they do it by sticking the thanks thing on there, and I didn't know this in, uh, until one person started doing this, um, and then I looked at it, and it's that YouTube take thirty percent of any donation. Can you believe that? Thirty percent. So don't use the thanks button. I'd rather you just give it to charity <laughs> and <laughs> give it to thirty percent to YouTube. YouTube, if you're listening, it's not right. Uh, if you want to send a donation, I've got PayPal, which is trevor at healingvibrations.co.uk. And if you just want to um, send love out to everyone, that's that's just as acceptable as well. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. Did you put that in there? It's April the 1st. And oh, it's April. The, well, April Fool's. We all started early, Heidi. <laughs> right. Um, Karen said, I'm so glad I've come across you both won wonderful <laughs> lovely funny people <laughs> oh. it's been really really nice connecting with you Karen really yeah nice connecting with you um yeah terrible aren't they thank you Marcy but yeah yeah wow can you imagine for every say thousand pound that ever gets donated to a charity PayPal get 300 crazy should go if it went to charity it wouldn't bother me if it was like helping you know, some orphan somewhere, then we're all for that. But anyway, but anyway, less said, the less I'll get banned, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on the phone doing this. Don't, um, Don't get the donation button or PayPal. Yeah, <laughs> it's complicated, isn't it? It's all, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And uh, we shall see you, see you me. intrepid explorers, tomorrow, same time. And uh, happy April's the first. And happy we shall. Happy April's the first. Happy April's the first. Okay, I've never heard that one before, but. Never heard that. Happy, happy April's. April the first. Yeah, it's it's. But it's just April Fools last until twelve p.m. Doesn't it? It's a Yorkshire thing. Is it? I went into work once, <laughs> and I come in and I told everyone I'd been burgled the night before and sat there in a mood, and everyone believed me. And then I was waiting until it was twelve p.m. I went. Hi! And then the fear kicked in. I sat there going, oh, maybe I've attracted it in my field. And then I and then I was riddled with anxiety because it's the karmic thing. Then I got riddled with anxiety because I was convinced that when I got home that I would have actually been burgled. Isn't fear a crazy thing? It's mad. I kind of did it all and I thought, oh, what if that's going to backfire on me? You know, because you hear about the ironies of stuff like that happening. It's true. They say that you shouldn't joke about anything. You don't know who's listening up there, but who knows? Anyway, just thought I'd share that random April Fool's I did. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you See later. See you tomorrow. Bye. I always do that. <laughs> that awkward split.